Thank you everyone for coming. Uh, so like you just heard, my name is Jacob Walker. I'm a community engineer with Arden Labs. This talk is understanding allocations. We're going to be talking about the stack and the heat. So depending on your background, uh, if you're a C programmer, you're probably already pretty familiar. Uh, in your program, there's two kinds of memory. You've got stack memory. And in Go, we have multiple stacks. There's stacks for each Go routine. And then we have heap memory, which is basically everything else. So uh, again, you might be asking yourself, in my code, how do I know if my variable lives on the stack or on the heap? And the answer is, you don't. Thanks for coming to my talk. <laughs> OK, but really, really, does it matter? I'm going to ask you this question first. It does not matter where your variable lives, or it does not matter that you know where your variable is as far as the correctness of your program is concerned. Go is going to make sure that your variable lives in the correct place, either the stack or the heap, so that your program does the correct thing. Now, it does affect the performance of your program, so you may need to know. Um, the reason it affects the performance is that anything that's um, on the heap gets managed by the garbage collector. The garbage collector is very good, uh, but it does cause some latency. Um, and it can cause latency for your whole program, not just the part creating garbage. So for some programs, you may be concerned about how much garbage you're putting on the heap. Before you look into this, I'm going to ask you, do you really need to know? First, if you're, you only need to know if all these things are true. First, if your program is not fast enough. If your program is already fast enough, you're done. There's no point in making a fast program any faster. There's probably something else you could be working on. If your program is not fast enough and you have benchmarks to prove it, we don't just guess about performance. Um, like Dave said earlier, we'd be optimizing in the dark. I don't want you guessing about performance. I want you to have benchmarks to prove that your program is not fast enough. If those benchmarks show excessive heap allocations, then maybe you should look into it. But really, only if all of these things are true do you need to worry about this. I really want you optimizing for correctness first, not performance. I'm going to make a couple disclaimers before I go any further. Um, what I'm going to show you here is accurate as of the current version 1.12.4. Um, and what I'm showing you are mechanics. Um, these, are not, these are things that could change in future versions. Um, and some of the specifics of my diagrams could also change as well. The general ideas are going to remain the same. Uh, also, this is for my 64-bit Mac. Uh, in my diagrams as well, I have certain optimizations that are disabled to make my points. Uh, and also in the code I'm going to show you, I'm using the built-in function print line instead of func.println. You should just use func.println. OK, so here's the fun part. What I've got here is a little program. Uh, we're going to kind of walk through it in like a step debugger fashion. So my program is very short. Um, you can see here, uh, what we do is we create a variable in with a value of 4. We take the value of that variable, and we pass it into this function called square. This function square takes that value, puts in a variable called x. It multiplies x by itself, returns that result, which we put in this variable, in 2, and then we print that variable. Now let's walk through that one line at a time and just kind of see what's happening in memory. As we advance through this, you see over here on the left, I have this arrow. This is the current line of code. And over here on the right, I have this yellowish rectangle, which is supposed to represent stack memory. When our execution starts, um, what, what's going to happen is Go is going to take a certain amount of memory from this stack that's large enough to hold all of the function local variables in this function main. We have in and in2. We see in has a value of 4, in2 has a, it's just going to start here as value 0. It's got these uh, memory addresses. This section here, this section of the stack is called a stack frame. And this, is, this stack frame is for a particular function, in this case, func main. 
when we it move forward, we call this function square, and we pass in the value of n, which is 4. Go is going to take some more stack memory. It frames off another section here to create this stack frame for this function, square. We have a new memory address here, and has this value 4 in this variable called x. When this function returns, it's going to multiply 4 by 4, so we have 16, which gets put into this variable, n2. Now notice, Go does not clean up after itself. This memory is still here. There's still values in this stack frame. The thing is, what Go does is it keeps track of its position in the stack. It knows, like I've got this black line here. It knows that anything above this line is valid. This is memory we're still using. Anything below this line is invalid. And it just knows not to use any of the invalid memory. What's very interesting about this is when I move on to the next line, we're going to go to line 6 and watch what happens. Go claims a new section of memory here. We have a new stack frame, this time for print line. Print line's going to do whatever it does with its arguments here. And now uh, it's just, Go is just going to move up and down through the stack, we, which is why we say that these stacks are like self-cleaning. Any variables that are on the stack will just get cleaned up as that space gets reused, which is great. Now let's put some pointers in the mix. Here, this is a different program. You can see this program here uh, has a value of 4, and we're going to take the address of n, and we're going to share it down into this function, inc. So this function, inc, takes this pointer variable x. It's going to dereference the pointer and increment the value the pointer points to. We come back up into main, and then we're going to call print line with the value of n. So walking through that in memory, here we have func main has its value 4 in this variable n, which is great. When we call inc, we pass the address of n. That's this part right here, ampersand n, address of n. The address of n is this memory address, 44780, which notice is the address of n here. So the value here in this variable x is this address, which points up here to this number 4. When we dereference the pointer and increment the value it points to, now n has a value of 5, our inc function returns, and again, this doesn't get cleaned up, but that's okay, because we're not using any of this memory. That's still just there while we're back up here in main. When we get to line 6, we call print line. Print line reclaims that space, and then it just moves on. And this works fine. So we are using pointers here, but in this case, it was able to stay on the stack. So here's a major point. Sharing down typically stays on the stack. When I say sharing down, I mean like passing pointers, passing references to things typically stays on the stack. What if we go the other way? What if we start returning pointers? Here's a new program. In this program here, uh, in func main, the first thing we do is we call another function, answer. Answer has a variable called x with a value of 42, and we return the address of x. The address of x is stored in this variable n, then main is going to dereference that pointer, get the value it points to, divide it by 2, pass that result to print line. Okay, walking through that one step at a time. When we first call main, uh, it has enough room for this variable n, which is, we'll say it's nil to begin with. We call answer, and we, ha we have a stack frame here for answer. We have this variable x with a value of 42, and then we return the address of x. So now n has this address here, with the address of x, which is 44770. But right now, we've already got a problem. Notice we have a pointer that is pointing down into the invalid section of memory. So what happens when we call print line? When we call print line, we know it's going to reclaim this space. So we dereference the pointer. We get that value. We divide it by 2. We get 21. We're going to call print line with a value of 21. And notice this has changed. We have overwritten what was there. We've clobbered that value that we had, and that is a big problem. So thankfully, that's not what actually happens. What actually would happen is this. Same program. Now in this program, when it first starts, we got our stack frame for main. That's great. We call answer, but the compiler knows it was not safe to leave that variable on the stack. It cannot be in the stack frame for that function answer. So instead, x is over here. x gets declared somewhere on the heap. When we return the address of x, what we're returning is this address here, which points out here onto the heap. So when we call print line, there's no problem. We don't accidentally clobber that variable that we had just asked for. So we say this escapes to the heap. 
um, I want to be clear, I, it, it says escapes to the heap, but it doesn't get moved. It's not like it's moved at runtime. This happens at compile time. This, ver this variable x is going to be constructed on the heap initially because the compiler knows. So here's my second major point. Sharing up typically escapes to the heap. When I say sharing up, I mean like returning pointers, returning references, returning things that have pointers in them will typically escape to the heap. But I'm being very careful about my words. I say sharing up typically escapes to the heap. Earlier I said sharing down typically escapes to the heap. The thing is, only the compiler knows. Reading the code, just looking at the language, like there's no keywords, there's nothing in, there's no, and of our 25 keywords of the language, none of them will force a variable to be on the stack or on the heap. It's only the compiler that knows. Let's take a look at the FAQ. So on the Go website, they have frequently asked questions. They have a section just about this. What it says is, when possible, the Go compilers will allocate variables that are local to a function in that function's stack frame. That's what it wants to do. Whenever it can, it wants to do this. However, if the compiler cannot prove that the variable is not referenced after the function returns, then the compiler must allocate the variable on the garbage collected heap to avoid dangling pointer errors. The error we saw before, that big problem, that would be, that's what we want to avoid here. And what I'm talking about, uh, when I see this here, cannot prove, what we're talking about here is escape analysis. What the compiler does is it's gonna look at our code and it's gonna see, does, do any of these variables need to be put on the heap? But it's not, well here, let's just look at the FAQ again. In the current compilers, if a variable has its address taken, that variable is a candidate for allocation on the heap. So when you use pointers, it's like it might go to the heap. But a basic escape analysis will recognize some cases when those variables will not live past the return from the function and they can safely reside on the stack. So only the compiler knows where these variables are going to be constructed. Uh, the good news is we can ask the compiler. We can, at, as we're building our program, we can say, hey, compiler, where are you putting all my variables? And let's take a look at how you do that. So you know you build your programs with go build. If you run go help build, we can see that we have a few more options. In the output from go help build, uh, we see this option called GC flags. Uh, what GC flags takes is a string, which is itself a list of arguments. And these arguments are gonna be passed to go tool compile. Uh, we, we use Go build to build our programs, but the compiler is actually Go tool compile, this here. If we look at that, Go tool compile, we can put dash H for help. We can see how that thing works. So on the compiler, there's an option here, dash M, which prints optimization decisions. This is how we can ask the compiler, where are you gonna put my variables? Putting all those things together, I would say Go build, GC flags, dash M, and if we run our previous programs like this, this is what we can see. Uh, in the first example where I use pointers but they're staying on the stack, when I build with dash M, we can see right here, uh, the address of N does not escape. On line five, when you take the address of this variable, it could potentially go to the heap. Escape analysis has proven that that is not gonna be referenced after func main returns, so it's fine. In the other example where we do escape to the heap, Right here, when we, line 10, it says when you take the address of x, that's gonna cause it to escape to the heap because this value x is going to be referenced after func answer returns. And like I mentioned before, it doesn't get moved at runtime. Right at compile time, it says right here, move to the heap x. We know this variable has to live on the heap. Uh, normally, when I do this, I run with dash m equals two, you actually get more verbose output, uh, but it doesn't fit on my slides. So when are values constructed on the heap? There's really only three times. The first and the most, kind of the most common is when a value could possibly be referenced after the function that constructed the value returns. Now, it's not enough to just say a variable's on the stack. You gotta remember, variables don't just go on the stack, they go in the stack frame for a particular function. So if that function has already returned, its stack frame isn't being used anymore, but if the variable's gonna be used after that happens, then it has to go to the heap. However, it's not enough 
to just say that it is referenced, Go takes a very safe approach here. If it is at all possible that this variable is going to get referenced after the function that created it returns, it just has to go to the heap. Uh, number two, this is, in my experience, less common. Uh, if the compiler determines a value is too large to fit on the stack, it's going to have to go to the heap. Or the third, uh, and this is pretty common, when the compiler doesn't know the size of a value at compile time. Uh, so let's say you have a slice, and the size of that slice is going to be determined at runtime. Well, there's no way the compiler can know if it's small enough to be on the stack or not. So those are the general guidelines, but let's talk about some more specific kind of values. Uh, values that commonly would get allocated, and this is not a complete list, would include values that are shared with pointers. We saw this earlier in my code examples. Variables that are stored in interface variables can go to the heap. Um, depending on how it's used, there's the way the escape analysis works in different versions. Sometimes you put a variable inside an interface, the escape analysis can no longer prove that it's safe to be on the stack. So that can be a pretty common cause. Uh, funk literal or like anonymous function variables uh, frequently will go to the heap. And related to that, any variables that are captured by a closure may go to the heap, or they may not. Like I've seen either way, you have to ask the compiler to find out. The backing data structure for maps, channels, slices, and strings will sometimes go to the heap. Again, it just depends on these uh, different scenarios. I mentioned strings because strings are effectively a special slice of bytes. So here's two examples. I've got two programs. Uh, they both do basically the same thing. Program on the left here, uh, the first thing it's going to do is going to call this function read. This function read is going to return a slice of bytes. Now, this slice has a constant size. It's only 32 bytes. It's, so it's small. It could fit on the stack, and it has a constant size, so the compiler knows what to do with it. Um, so this function is going to create this slice, assume that we like, put some data in here, and then we return it. This function on the right does it differently. Here on the right, we create the slice of bytes up in main, and we pass that slice down into read. The read function takes the slice and is going to write into it and then return. Now, in this scenario, like when you run this, what you find is that here, this one on the right is going to stay on the stack, specifically this, this uh, slice variable and the 32 bytes that are behind it. Whereas on the left, every time you call the read function, this slice of bytes is going to be referenced after func read returns. And so this will frequently be going to the heap instead. And this actually explains a question I've had for a long time. Why is the IO reader interface the way it is? IO reader is an interface that's something you can read. It's frequently implemented by files, network connection, bytes buffers, things like that. Um, and it always was confusing to me when I first started, why do I call the read, function, the read method? Why doesn't it return me the slice? I'm saying I want to read some bytes. It would make sense that I would say, hey, please read some bytes. And it says, here's your bytes. But it doesn't work that way. Instead, you make the slice and you pass the slice into the read method, and then it returns a number to tell you how much of your slice it filled. This was confusing to me until I understood how the stack and the heap work, and how uh, in the second example, if IO Reader worked this way, we would have so much garbage on the heap, it'd be, it'd be a big mess. OK, here's my high level points. Number one, uh, like I've said before, I absolutely want you to optimize for correctness, not performance. However, if you get into a situation where you really need to be looking at your heap allocations, then these things will matter. Go only puts function variables on the stack if it can prove that the variable is not used after the function returns. If you want to help Go put more variables on the stack and use less of the heap, you have to help it make this decision. You have to help it decide that it's safe. It wants to. Whenever it's at all possible, Go wants to put function local variables on the stack, but it will only do it if it is absolutely sure that it's safe. Sharing down typically stays on the stack. Sharing down or passing pointers to things typically will stay on the stack. You can't say for sure, though. And inversely, sharing up or returning pointers typically escapes to the heap, but not always. 
things like inlining or other things will change how this is going to actually work at the end of the day. The only way you can find out is to ask the compiler. If you want to know, you, you use those flags, you ask the compiler, where are my variables getting built? And probably the most important thing is don't guess, use the tooling. There's a lot of tools available to you. Um, I don't have time to cover all of them, but there's other things available for like pprof and um, the tracer and other things where you can look and see what's actually happening at runtime. There's so many tools available, you should be using them. And that's all I got. So thank you. Yeah, so we have uh, time for one question. Which one do you think is better, super effective code with many pointers in it, or clear code but a little bit slow, memory inefficient? Okay, good question. And the answer is absolutely the clear code. Um, we don't make this decision about if we should use pointers or not, if we should try to like get things to go on the heap or stay on the stack or not. We do not make this decision based on performance. We always are going to be making this decision based on correctness, integrity, clarity. The, there was a whole talk about it this morning. Um, you absolutely want to be doing this from a correctness, clarity point of view first. Um, but only in very, very ex like special circumstances do we really need to be optimizing for performance, and even then, probably not. Okay. All right, thank you so much.